Hey, just real quick, I had a testimony. I want to share this. You were just doing your tithes and offerings. I have a tithing testimony. You want to hear a tithing testimony? Uh, as as uh, Pastor Dana was just sharing, I recently got married. Actually, just about, ex- just about ex- almost exactly four months ago, we got married. Um, the 27th of May, and so that's pretty awesome. That's a great testimony in itself. But, um, you know, as we were bringing our lives together, um, we were kind of just, you know, discussing finances and different, you know, just all the logistical things that come together in a marriage. And we're both, you know, have been single for a long time and have careers. And so we were just, you know, figuring all that out. And so there was a, there was a moment where you kind of just had to put the pause button on my giving, actually, because we were kind of bringing things together and uh, figuring all that out. And I hadn't tithed in like a few months uh, leading up to the wedding and then also afterwards, and it was just a lot busy and everything. And I just had this sense of uh, feeling a little bit behind. You know, I'm like, I got to catch up, you know. And so uh, it was like probably a month ago we went to church in Reading. And I thought, and I, I didn't really have time to kind of figure out the number. I just thought, we'll just start with this number. It was a pretty significant number for us. And I thought, this is our tithe. It was the first tithe as a couple. And we, we just gave that tithe. And, and that week, um, immediately, we had this kind of just out of the blue investment thing where literally we made, an, it, was, it was more than tenfold profit on our tithe in three days. And uh, it was just like as if the Lord was saying, I'm waiting for you. It's like, I, I, I felt like I was behind, but the Lord's just like, oh, I'm, I've been storing this up for you. Bam. And it was just like, it was actually about 11 times what we tithe. And again, it was a significant number for us. Um, yeah, it was just like, bam. So we just released that fire tie on your tithe. I, this is one thing you could test the Lord with, is your tithe. One, one other quick testimony. My bro, one of my brothers, he's a, he's a businessman in, in, in the state of Washington. He, he uh, you know, when you're in business, it's hard to know what you're making. Anybody relate to that? Because you're like, you have your accounts receivables and all the different things going on. And it's like, how am I, how much? And you're always trying to mis- minimize your taxes. And, and so he would always, you know, kind of give it his best guess for his tithe. And... Uh, Probably 10 years ago, the Lord spoke to him and challenged him and said, hey, how much do you want to make? <laughs> and so instead of tithing uh, at the end of the month, he started tithing at the beginning of the month on what he was believing to make. And he's been doing that ever since. And every time he raises that number, he just makes more money. So I just released that testimony over it too. You know, this is something you can, uh, and I'll tell you this. What he's tithing now used to be his income, his total income, in like 10 years. Yeah, seriously. I mean, ridiculously blessed. Just turn your neighbor and say, ridiculously blessed. (laughs) Turn to your another neighbor and say, I'm a blessed man or a blessed woman. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to have fun this morning. I just feel, I, I have a gift of faith this morning that something's going to happen that only God can do. And uh, I've been actually, I, it was just dawning on me as I was sitting there, I've been seeing the number 23, I've been asking the Lord about it, and I'm like, I feel like I need to release that, Psalm 23. This is the year 2023, and... The 23rd is your birthday? Whose birthday? All right. Happy birthday. Um, is today the 23rd? No, it's the 20, 24th, yeah. Um, but I, I want to release this because um, I believe this year, and I was even talking to Daniel about this at the beginning of the year, that there's an anointing to cross your Jordan River. You know, and it's this whole thing with Michael Jordan. He was number 23, you know, and... And I just felt like the Lord's been speaking to me about the number 23. And, um, and I'm actually wearing my Jordans today, too. So, <laughs> so and, uh, 
Actually, there, there's a prophetic story on these, these Jordans. Um, uh, I have a friend gave these to me, like three days before our wedding, I think. And uh, it was a prophetic gift. He said, you're crossing your Jordan. And uh, I had an encounter with the Lord when he gave me these. So, yeah, there's that. So, um, specifically Psalm 23, verse 3, it says, he restores my soul. Just say that, he restores my soul. In, this, in, a, in the NIV, it says, he refreshes my soul. Uh, there's an anointing for refreshment. There's times of refreshing that he wants to pour out on this congregation and he heals bodies, and he heals souls. He's doing it. I've been just hearing the testimonies. It's so exciting. Um, and so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna cross the Jordan. You know, there's something really interesting in the Bible. The story of the crossing of the Jordan is a very interesting, uh, just so, there's so much in that, that story. But one thing I want to emphasize today is there's only two people out of about 2 million that actually, uh, from the original promise that actually crossed the Jordan. You guys know the story, uh, the 12 spies, you know, 10 of them were hopeless spies. Just say boo. <laughs> but two, Joshua and Caleb, they were abounding in hope. And they saw, they saw the opportunity in the challenge. They, saw, they, they had faith uh, to, that their giants that not only they could take their giants, but their giants were going to be their bread. And this is a room full of Joshua's and Caleb's. That this is a room full of people, when you see a challenge, I believe there's a grace being released to actually get excited about your challenge. Like not only are you going to take that giant, you're going to eat it for breakfast. It's going to nourish you. And... Uh, there's just there's something powerful about that because when God gives us a promise, it's not it's not like automatically going to happen. It didn't happen for the people of Israel. It was like only two of them actually possessed that promise, and this should be sobering to us because sometimes we can um, uh, have this mindset where if God says it's going to happen, we can just sit back and watch it happen. And sometimes He will instruct you. To do that, like he's just sit back and watch. But oftentimes there's a co-laboring, you know, he spoke to Joshua and he says, every place where the sole of your foot treads that I have given to you. So there is something about him moving forward by faith that actually he began to possess that promise. And uh, I, I want to release that today because there's, this is a room full of promise. And God, oftentimes, there's a narrow road that he's calling us to in walking out the fulfillment of promises and crossing our Jordan. It's like, it's like he doesn't, he's not going to just do it on his own. It's like there's something about our co-laboring of like giving him something to work with. I love that phrase, give God something to work with. Maybe it's like a declaration. Maybe it's a, an act of faith. It's like he responds to faith. You know? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, thank you, Lord. Well, um, I'm going to read a couple scriptures. We're gonna, um, I'm, I'm going to introduce you to Mrs. Hug here eventually. That's, that's going to be the highlight. <laughs> I know why you all came today. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I've been, I've been joking with Shanna. I'm like, this is the Shanna tour. Because I'm just like introducing her to everybody. Like we've been, in, we were just in Pennsylvania for a week um, with her family. And then we've been up in Prescott visiting friends. And, and yesterday we had a group of pastors from the area that are connected to our Bethel Leaders Network. And everybody wanted to talk to Shanna. I was like, <laughs> this is great. And uh, I'm, I, I feel like there's a special connection I have with you guys. Of just This feels like family. So I want to share her with you and just a little bit of her story. So we'll see what God does. It's going to be fun. But, at fir but first, I want to um, read uh, some other scriptures. I, I believe there's going to be some things released here. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. 
Psalm 18, verse 31. There's a portion of Scripture that I feel like uh, God is speaking right now. This is uh, something he's been speaking to me, and I'm going to share it with you. Verse 31, for who is God but the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? The God who girds me with strength and makes my way blameless. Just say, he makes my way blameless. I'm going to go on, but I'm going to pause there for a second. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. I don't know if you guys have seen those places in uh, Scripture where it says it'll, it'll, it'll have a promise, and it'll say, this is what the blameless man gets. You ever read that? Especially in the Psalms, there's a lot of different places where it's like, for thus God will bless the blameless man. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll see that and I'll think, I'll start making a list of the reasons why I'm not blameless. <laughs> you ever been there? But I love this because this scripture, it says, in, it, here in verse 32, it says, he makes my way blameless. It doesn't sound like I have much of a choice in the matter. <laughs> he makes my way blameless. That is good news. And there's somebody here that needs to hear that. In fact, there's somebody here that you've been making lists of why you're not blameless. He says, you can go ahead and finish that list, and then you can burn it. All right? Some of you guys literally need to do that. You need to make a list of all the reasons why you're not blameless, and just go ahead and burn that. All right? In faith. Because God says he's making your way blameless. It goes on, I love, this. I love this, this passage, verse 33, he makes my feet like hind's feet and sets me upon my high places. Say, my high places. My high places. He makes my feet like hind's feet and sets me upon my high places. He doesn't set me on your high places. He doesn't set me on Pastor Daniel or Pastor Joy's high places. He sets me on my high places. There's a high place that each one of us is called to. And, you know, it might not seem like a high place to others, but it's your high place. And God is going to set you on your high places. And he's going to make your feet like hinds feet. This is kind of older language, but it's like a, he's going to make your feet like, like a mountain goat's foot. It's like a deer foot, like sure-footed. Have you ever seen a mountain goat? Those things will go to crazy places. And they're like super sure-footed. Have you ever seen? It's like creepy watching it. They're just like, you know, the, our high place is often a place that's terrifying. It's a treacherous place. It, again, it might not be scary for others, but it's scary to you. And it's, and, and you know, Chris Valentin says it like this. He says, the dogs of destiny... Or, or how does he put it? The dogs of doom often bark at the doors of your destiny. So the thing that terrifies you the most oftentimes is it's connected to your calling. <laughs> it's the place of resistance. It's the place uh, where the word of the Lord is tested because God's going to show off through that and you're going to know that it's him. And you're going to know that it's his grace that's, that's making a way for you. It's not your great abilities. It's not your great giftings. It's not your you know, great theology even or your great education. It's him. It's, it's, it's our great God that's doing it. He's, he's, it's his grace moving through us. It's like the Apostle Paul says it like this. He says, I'm, do, I'm working harder than all the apostles, but not I, but the grace of God working through me. He had an understanding of this. And, and, and you can see it, too, with the Apostle Paul and Peter. You know, the Apostle Paul is this, like, genius theologian. He's been in Jude Judaism, like, just, like, he's just, like, a total boss. And then the Lord calls him to the Gentiles. And then he calls, you know, this gangster fisherman, fisherman, Peter, who, like, 
doesn't have a religious bone in his body, he calls him to the Jews. It's like that was his high place. It's like he wasn't equipped for that in the natural. The Lord says, oh, that's your high place. So the Lord is releasing today, he's releasing grace to take high places. Each one of you has a mountain that he's called you to. And he's releasing courage to take that mountain. But there's something about this that, you know, again, uh, moving forward by faith, believing the promise, he's not going to do it. He's not going to just do it for you oftentimes. Sometimes he will, and that's always fun. But oftentimes, that promised land is something that you have to, you have to kind of like journey with him on. It's a co-laboring. And it's, it's, it, he, it, this is how he designed this whole journey. It's like he could do it on his own, but that's, what, what, what fun is there in that? He's, he's, you know, I was, I was talking to my wife yesterday about people, there, there's people that I know that I've just, I'm acquaintance with them and I can hang out with them. But I don't really know a person until I've worked with them. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I used to have a business, and I would hire people. And some of my best friends today are people that worked with me and for me in that business. Because we went through it. We, we co-labored. God wants to co-labor with you. He wants to get down and dirty with you and into the trench with you in, the, in that places, those places where your insecurities come up, where your fears come up, where you're, where you're terrified, where, you, where the worst parts of you come out. That's what God's calling you to. He's, he wants that. He wants to co-labor with you. He wants to know you. He wants to get in the trenches with you and a lot of us have this more of acquaintance relationship with God. We can, we can fall into that. Not, no, nobody in this room. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. And it can be comfortable. But when you start getting in the trenches of your calling and what he's called you to, where you like need him. And you're like terrified. And you're, you're depending on him. I love uh, Roland and Heidi Baker. They, you know, they have this book, it's called Keeping the Fire. I, I would really encourage you to get that book. It'll challenge you. Roland wrote this book, it's called Keeping the Fire, and it's the five core values of Iris Ministry. We both went through their school, and uh, it's the Harvest School of Missions in Mozambique. But um, one of their core values of Iris Ministries is if they are not in need of a miracle, they're not in the will of God. <laughs> that's how they've chosen to live it's, they, they live a crazy lifestyle <laughs> but they believe if, if they're in a place where they're not in need of a miracle they're not on the edge of what God's doing it's challenging because oftentimes we want to stay comfortable right yeah. <laughs> be like oh I'll go to church I'll you know maybe even give, give some money here and there but I'm not going to I'm not going to just give my whole life, you know? And so that's, uh, if you really want to get close to God, I challenge you. Get in the trenches. Just ask, start asking him the questions, like what, what scares me? You know, fear is a spirit. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of, of love, power, and a sound mind. And, and fear often will manifest itself in, in times of insecurity when we start to feel insecure. We feel uh, less than, not, not, we're not qualified, we don't have what it takes, we feel like we don't have what it takes. But those moments are actually, actually gifts. When you, when you have a moment where you feel insecure, do you know that that's actually a gift? Because... It's, it's, it's something that's being revealed that God wants to take out of your life. You know, um, I, I experienced this when I was in BSSM in second year. I noticed there were certain individuals, when I would get around them, I'd feel insecure. I'd feel like it was just hard to be with them. It was hard to be around them because it made me feel 
I don't even know how to describe it. I just it was hard work to be in their presence. And I think a lot of it's spiritual. Um, some of you guys know who Ben Fitzgerald is. You guys know who that guy is? He's like a wild man. And he was a, year, a class ahead of me. And I used to travel with him. Um, and I would, I, and he's, he's very like a, kind of a bulldog personality. He had zero pastoral, especially at that, t- that time, zero pastoral bone in his body. Just, and, and I would go on these trips with him. We see God move powerfully, and I'd come back exhausted. But it was more, it was more of a, this emotional exhaustion. And I was like, what is that? I just, it was like hard to be in the car. And this social anxiety would come on me, and I'd just feel exhausted after these trips. And I realized there was insecurity that was hiding. And he carries a gift for this, like for deliverance, actually. Some people just start manifesting around him. And I was, I think it was a level of manifestation, you know, um, I'm getting a little off the topic here, but you know that, that the phrase demon possession in scripture is not accurate. Uh, the King James, uh, it talks about demon possession. That's not an accurate translation. If you really study the original language on it, it's a, a better translation would be demonized. Okay. And I personally believe that there are levels of demonization. <laughs> and that's a whole different topic. We won't get into that. But all of us, my point is all of us will experience some level of demonization. Some level of attack, torment. It doesn't, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about they're controlling you. But that's, that's the animal, he, he comes at us with these flaming arrows. It's a level of influence, you could say, of the demonic. And so uh, I became aware, so oftentimes we stay in a place of comfort when those things start to manifest themselves, things that strongholds in our life. But you can be thankful when, the, when things start coming to the surface. Because here's the beauty of the gospel. You, here, 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 here's one way you could say the gospel. You could be okay in any circumstance with anyone, even if they nail you, people nail you to a cross, you could be okay. So if you're not okay, there's something in you that God wants to save. He wants to deliver you from. He wants to get you to a place of okay. Does that make sense? So when you feel like you're not okay, count it a gift. So uh, in that case with Ben, uh, my friend Ben, and there was other individuals I experienced this anxiety around. I'm going to intentionally spend as much time around this person as possible because I'm, something is coming, being like actually extracted from me. It was like, it was, it was, it was, it was doing something to me. It was like a, and and, and it did. It changed who I was. I would just intentionally spend time around people that made me uncomfortable. And, and you know, we can come up with creative things of like, oh, that, I don't like their personality type. Or, and I'm like, no, you could be okay in any circumstance. Yeah. And if you're not okay, God wants to make you okay. Amen. But it's an inside job. Yes. <laughs> it's an inside job. So... Does that, does that help anybody? Yeah. So uh, he makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. You guys ever seen that free solo? Anybody seen that free solo documentary of the guy? It's this documentary on Netflix, I think, where he like literally climbs these mountain face, like rocks with no rope. It is, it's crazy. I know it's insane, but that's the picture I get here. He sets me upon my high places. He wants to, that thing that terrifies you, he says, I'm going to make your feet sure-footed. I'm going to make your giants fall as you move forward. You're David. You're a giant killer. This is your identity. So uh, it goes on, verse 34. He trains my hands for battle. So that my arms 
can bend a bow of bronze. Again, it's the same kind of idea. He wants to do the impossible through you. The bow of bronze is, represents the impossible. It's something that you cannot do in your own strength. So your high place, one, one way you can identify your mountain, your high place, is you can't do it alone. You can't do this in your own strength. What he's called you to, you cannot manufacture it. You cannot be smart enough. You cannot study enough. It's impossible in your own strength. And that's one way you can tell it's your high place. It's like, you have to have him. You cannot bend a bow of bronze in your own strength. But with God, <laughs> you can bend a bow of bronze. It's a supernatural anointing strength that he'll put on your life to do the impossible. Amen? Amen. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. Verse 35, you have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand upholds me. And your gentleness makes me great. Isn't that good? And uh, I think in the NLT it talks about your help makes me great. You are all born for greatness. You are all born to scale a mountain. You are all born to stand in a high place to glorify your King Jesus. You are all born to be kings and queens. That's why it says you'll cast your crowns on it at his feet. You have to have a crown to cast at his feet. You're all born for greatness. I love this, though. It says, your gentleness makes me great. Your gentleness makes me great. It makes me think of that scripture. It's your kindness that leads to repentance. This, this is beautiful picture of his gentleness making us great. How do we bend the bow of bronze? How do we accomplish this impossible task? Kill Goliath. It's his gentleness that will make you great. It's his kindness that will lead you to repentance. You can actually repent yourself into greatness. It's, it's not, when, when we're talking about bending the bow of bronze, this is not something that we need to uh, strive, into, strive our way into. It's, it's something we can surrender our way into. He makes my way blameless. He makes my feet like hinds feet. It sets me upon my high places. He, 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 he helps me bend the bow of bronze. And, uh, you know, uh, greatness is an interesting thing because the world strives for greatness. The world all around us, people are striving for greatness. Because everyone deep down knows they're meant for it. They're meant to be great. Even the disciples, and when you start, you start spending time with Jesus, it'll actually accentuate that. That, that. that deep down realization that you're meant, you're born for greatness. And the disciples had that. And when the disciples, they started arguing actually about who was the greatest. <laughs> But Jesus, when they're arguing with about, about who's the greatest, notice how Jesus responds to that. You can, you can look, you can see this in the Gospels. Jesus doesn't rebuke them for wanting to be great. He shows them the way. He wants you to be great. He wants you to do great things. But it's not the way the world thinks. This is, it's, it's an upside down kingdom. You want to go higher, you go lower. Right? If you want to be stronger, get weaker <laughs> in him. Yes. Expose your weakness <clears throat> to him and watch him show off. And uh, we need to take a little laugh break real quick. <laughs> 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 you 
You want to be stronger? Laugh more. (laughs) (laughs) Your gentleness makes me great. The world strives after greatness. It's interesting to me, and I, I see this with professional athletes, you know, the actual greatness and ad- admiration of men can have a corrosive effect on your soul without God. And, and you see this with people that experience fame, especially like overnight where they don't have like a foundation to carry uh, that kind of attention. But I've noticed this with a lot of professional athletes, especially um, athletes that come from very simple beginnings and maybe they aren't very educated, or they're just, they're simple people. Um, there's a humility about them. Have you noticed that they often will give God glory? So even people that don't even, aren't walking with God? And I, I think there's actually something in that, that actually, it, it, it's like, it's a way of their, them coping with greatness. It actually is it, for their mental health. <laughs> Because there, there's something about that, uh, the attention of people, it can actually have a corrosive effect on us if we don't understand how to cast that crown before the Lord. And uh, I, I think this is just an interesting thing. You know, we were talking about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, you know, is considered the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And I don't, I don't, no, I don't I'm not making any commentary on that. <laughs> but... His name's Michael, and the name Michael actually means who is like God. I believe that that's a prophetic statement that God is making. This man that we call the goat, but his name means who is like God. I don't know, just an interesting thought. There's, his gentleness makes us great. And you see this with like people that experience true greatness, it's an identity. Like even people that don't know the Lord, you see this. It's, it's not something that they're, they're doing so much. It's something they're being. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, like you, we've probably all experienced this. When, like we're, 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 in, we're doing something it's like we were born to do. And it's like you don't have to try. In fact, if you try, it messes it up. It's more of like a, it's just like a place of surrender where you're just... You're doing what you were meant to do. And you see this in human beings that they're doing what they're meant to do. You can just tell that person was meant to do that. It's like they were, there's something that God put in them. They're doing what they were created to do. And it just, it's, it just comes out of them. It's an identity. Your identity is greatness. Your identity is son. Your identity is daughter. I'm just going to finish with this, and then I'm going to have my wife come up here. Just giving you a heads up. Verse 36, you enlarge my steps under me, and my feet have not slipped. Thank you, Lord. So again, I just wanted to release this, this scripture. Excuse me. And again, I want to emphasize that there's a grace being released today to take your high place, to identify it, and to scale that mountain. In Jesus' name, go ahead and stand with me just for a minute as you come up here. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are releasing grace right now. Grace, in Jesus' name. More grace to do the impossible, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank you that you're releasing revelation of high places, things that you've called individuals here to that scare them sometimes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that this will be a church. I, I had a word for Daniel and Joy on, on Friday that, I, that the Lord was going to give them Moses. He was going to entrust them with deliverers. 
And this is a room full of deliverers. And it's going to look, uh, for many of you, it's going to look like you're going to be wearing like a clinic coat. You're going to be wearing gloves on a construction site. You're going to be, you're, it, it, it's not going to look like a podium. It's going to look like the marketplace. He's going to use you to be a deliverer. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Just say, I receive that.